Good evening, everyone. It's Andy Glenn here from Sharks TV, welcoming you all to another Sharks TV podcast. And it's a catch up this week with Lewis Young. Lewis, how are you doing? Yeah, not too bad, Andy. Thanks for having me on. No problems, no problems. It's nice to see you. Um, looking fit for the start of the new season? Yeah, no, I try to stay on ice as, as much as possible. Um, kind of skated two, two or three times a week um, all summer. So I took a wee break, went on holiday and stuff, but no, I tried to try to keep as fit as possible. So, yeah, feeling good. We are well. You've got fitness conditioners and all the rest of it, starting with the Sharks as well now. So the whole fitness things are it's at another level now, isn't it? Yeah, I think for me, I think... Um, I actually heard Spud say it when he was on the, the podcast with Mason, but no matter what you do in the gym, the second you come back on the ice, it's a completely different level of fitness. So for me, every summer, I just try and skate as much as possible because I feel like that keeps me in you know, game shape. And then also go to the gym as well as much as I can, but I feel like if I'm skating all the time, that's how I, I feel good and can I eat good as well, just to kind of keep the weight right as well. So yeah. where, have you, where have you been skating? Because it's not always as easy as it sounds, is it? Yeah, no, um, Andy Anderson at Comarnock, he had me on pretty much the, the full summer, um, skating with the Comarnock Thunder team. Um, and then just with, with different teams, I mean, skating a bit with my dad's team as well, just um, all the old boys, the Flyers. So, um, no, nah, they, they can move the puck about well, so it's, it's good to get on with them and, and have a bit of fun with guys I've kind of known my full life. So, yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. What else have you been doing during the summer? Uh, I went on holiday. Um, so, when was that? I've been last month. Um, went to Dominican, that was good. And then, yeah, see, to be honest, I just kind of work and skate. That's like kind of my, my main go to for the summer. I'll just kind of keep at it. Yeah. I, I, I miss it too much if I, if I take too long out. So, Well, you mentioned work, and I guess everybody will have seen you on the. <laughs> the BBC TV yeah. show by by now, so they all know what you do yeah. for a, what, what you do for a living. So uh, special rates uh, for Sharks fans if they're selling their house. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll try my best. Anyone down here, I'm, I'm happy to take on the business. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, no, I've, I've I've worked in property for probably best part of three years now. Um, and to be fair, when I, I started working at Wilson's, can I start a last season? And also when the the opportunity came for me this season to to kind of go more full-time and, and be staying down here and um, give me that kind of more ice time and, and focus a bit more on hockey, you know. They were amazing with me and, and let me kind of go to, to two days a week and, you know, I'll still try and do as much as, as I can away from that. And also if there's, there's stuff down here, uh, even in my normal working days, I'll, I'll try and take it on. But, um, yeah, so, no, nah, it's been it's been good. And I've only just started kind of part-time um last week but uh, enjoying it so far being down here so, that, so that's the plan work part time and make a real go the hockey this this season yeah um, I mean I spoke to to Spud to kind of during the season last year a little bit about it um, and kind of what my plan was and just the fact that you know I, I feel like I, I want to give it a real go again you know I, I, obviously I played abroad before and then I was you know really focusing on my hockey and I was living there and mm -hmm. I just thought, you know, last season I, I, I loved every minute of it. It was it was amazing. Um, and I just think, you know, taking hockey a bit more seriously again, trying to push myself and just see how far I can get with it. You know, that's what you kind of work your your full life towards. So, you know, I feel like if I if I give it the best um, opportunity, it would be to to move down here. And also, we we got that sorted through through the summer and kind of went from there here I am now and the, my work have been really good with it so no it's been it's been really really good ah, so fair play to them and keeping on the theme of property sponsored by Asprey this year as well yeah that's no, pretty cool I uh, need to get some stuff signed up with John for that and see if I, I can get any business that way <laughs> <laughs> um, you had a good season uh, last season in terms of you, you personally um, first senior hat trick as, as well um, mm -hmm. that was kind of kind of special it's some real Highlight games dropped the gloves mm -hmm. a few, a few times. That wasn't that successful, but you, know, <laughs> you were you were you were a man on the spot and you did what you had to do, didn't you? Yeah, I think um, for me, you just try to be a, a guy that gives you a bit of everything. Um, be be versatile, you know, whether that is you know playing more of an offensive role or you know if it's sticking up for my teammates or being defensive or just try to kill a game. You know, whatever I'm to do, I'm going to go out and do it. So. No, I think j just in that sense, um, I think last year was probably the first season where I really had had to do a bit of everything. Because um, I, I think before that, you know, the the season before the national one, I did play more of that kind of top six, you know, pure kind of yep. putting up points. And um, I think, no, I think last year I enjoyed it. Um, 
but I think you know go, going forward I think definitely the best part of my game is probably the, the creative side of it um, obviously still still play you know, the physical game but I think if I can really kind of hem in and, and you know the offensive part of the game I think that's where I'll, I'll, I'll be successful as well you played with a lot of different people on a lot of different mm-hmm. lines um, last season as as well this year with Peacock taking a step back you're you, I mean you're one of the, the most obvious centres for, mm-hmm. for, for the Sharks as well what are your thoughts going forward on lines or are you just happy to play anywhere yeah I mean no I mean for me I want to to be one of the top guys, you know, and I've I've got the confidence in, in myself to to go out and do it. But I think um, you know, just try to make as much of an impact as possible. I mean, I want to be you know one of the the go to guys that if it, if the game's tight and they're looking down the bench at the guys that are going to make an impact. I want to be one of the guys, um, and I'll, I've I've been like that all my life. I I, I want to be kind of in control of a game, and you know, I need to work my hardest to to make sure that I'm that, and you know, I know I'm going to. So no, I think um, also with, with peaks. You know, deciding to to go strictly into to being a general manager that opens up a spot, and yeah. you know everyone needs to to take their chances. Um, and you know, as as much as I love playing with Peaks, he's a great teammate and great guy to have around. You know, in the dressing room, you, know, you need to look at that and say, right, well, it's time for for me to step up now. And there's plenty of other guys that can do it as well. It's just a it's a collective effort, and you know we need to we all need to make the most of that opportunity. And you know, I think um, there's going to be more guys than just me saying, oh, I'm looking at that spot yeah. saying. You know, that's that's a spot I can fill, but you know, everyone needs to just kinda of go in with the same mentality and, and you know, work as hard as they can at it. That's the evolution of a hockey team really, isn't it? Um I don't know, when when you look at your instat stuff, um, and we've talked about this before in mm. these these podcasts where that's the, the individual highlights reel for you. Do you get um stats for things like uh, percentage draw wins and things like that or is that you got to look at that I need to look at that one a bit more to be honest <laughs> yeah, I'm, looking at a bit yeah, more. Um, I'm just I, I, I know from looking at some of the the stats um, I know Peaks was you know a good 70%, yeah. 70% yeah. and you'd been working with him and learning how to do to, to get to get better um, and uh, I just wondered where you were at yeah I think um, I started off the season like really rough but I, I actually I hadn't played centre and like probably a good couple of years like and obviously the, the season before I came to Solway I was playing Hungary and I only played like uh, it might have been like 12 to 15 games and I think in that I started off as a winger and I maybe only played like my last three games in the middle so yeah and then obviously the um the year before national one Johnny played center so last year was my first year playing center properly like properly since I was in Canada yeah. and even at that I was a covid short and season so I really hadn't played it much at all so that was a kind of first thing that I knew when I going into the season that was going to be my role like kind of playing that third line centre um, and I spoke to to Peaks early days and I think to start the season I was like r- like really like ridiculously low like it could have even been in the 20s and um, I think after Christmas I got, I got better I played a bit of wing as well though in that time but I think oh no I, I ended the season close to close to 50 um, so I, 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 to, to be fair, that, that that was about a few games that were, that were pretty solid on on the draws. But nah, I think um, that was one thing I improved massively on, like kind of going through the season. Because um, nah, at the start I couldn't when I draw to save myself, <laughs> but I worked on it, so it, it improved. Well, hockey fans like stats. We're, yeah. we're all we're all statos here. So uh, oh. somebody through the season, take a note of. Uh, I'm probably lose, like lose percentage drawings. Any of my teammates, I'm like probably one of the biggest hockey like. Geeks, you'll meet. Like, like, I'm like a proper stats guy. Yeah, like proper. Like it's horrendous. Oh, like right. it's, it's like a, a yeah, it's, it's it's bad. Like I'm, I, I always look at stats. Yeah, it's I, pretty bad. I have to say, I like I like it myself. <laughs> um, uh, you got any key stats from last year that you you think were were worth sharing? Because I've um, shared a few on the podcast recently. In what sense, like for I, anyone? I, I've just looked at a couple. Well, I'm going to say it again. I've said it in two podcasts now, so forgive me, everyone who's watched my podcast. Dunbar was in, either scored or involved mm-hmm. or assisted, yeah, and just shy of fifty percent of Sharks goals. That's an amazing. Yeah, that's, start. that's a pretty good start. <laughs> no um, one, no, no one scored twenty six percent of the Sharks goals. Yeah. Oh uh, no, it was just under twenty. 
25 percent. Yeah, he scored. He got 25 in the power play as well. Uh, he got uh, half uh, his goals in the power play. And he got, and there were certainly two that I think he tipped that he was never given credit for early yeah, on. So in the couple season. Of, he, uh, knowing and knowing guards, there was a couple he took that definitely yeah, wasn't his either. It probably even itself. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. But yeah, you know, you got any key stats for for us that? Um, just to put you on the spotlight. Just Lewis. to put me in the spot. Um, I think. Um, I like the, the Gardy one, like, just to, to show, like, how, how dominant he was. I think he was, like, 40 points more than, like, anyone he played in a line with. I think that's pretty mad. Yeah, that was pretty good. And, you know, but he felt he's a joke, so, like, it kind of makes sense. The second the second highest um, scorer was was Peaks, and yeah. he was he was in the, in the 30s. You know, it was a, yeah. it was a, big, a big difference in terms yeah. of goals scored. But it'll be interesting to see... Who steps up, as you say, everybody's looking at these opportunities and, and who fills these yeah. these skates and, and who puts up the big numbers. Who are you looking to to see who to, to have a, a a standout season this this season coming? Apart from myself. Apart from yourself. Apart I, was from myself. I, was, I was an absolute given Lewis. Yeah. I wasn't even gonna um, ask you that. Nah, um I mean I, I speak with Big Mace all the time. Um and he was staying at mine for a little bit before um, he went to Belfast and also, just kind of talking. I, th- I think he's gonna have a good year. Um, he's, he's looking. He's looking fitter. Yeah, and I just think his head's in the right place as well. You know, he's he's feeling good. He's had a good summer, um, and even been on the ice with him a couple of times. Um, he even came on with at Kilmarnock uh, last week. So, nah, I've, I've, I think um, I think he'll he'll have a good year. And to be fair, I think um, even Scotty as well. Looking at looking at Scotty, I think. He probably had a, a slower start to the year last year and then kind of started yeah. to pick up towards the end, getting a full season out of Cali as well. And to be honest, I, I just think in, in general, everyone likes, everyone's likes everyone got more to give and there's more opportunity there as well. Um, you know, even the imports, you know, both of them, you know, it took them a while to get going. Like, it's brand new to them. I think, like, Garzi, I mean, he was halfway through the season, he still wasn't a point per game and look how he ended up. So, you know, if you're getting a full season at him, knowing the league like you need to think that he's going to put up you know a really good amount of points and even Arcee like I don't even remember how many games it was before he scored his first goal it was, and it was, it was nearly Christmas before he yeah, scored his first so goal so th- there you go and I, I think he ended up with, with a good amount and good amount of points I think, and, I think, he, I think he was 10, 10 goals by the end of the season I think uh, yeah so, so th- there you go and, and even th- everyone is, is going to step up like everyone's got a year under their belt where yeah. you know they're, they're, they're ready to go um, and I, I think everyone's going to step up in, in their own way you know it's, it's not going to be the same for everyone but everyone's got a role there to play mm-hmm. um, and it's just about kind of having the right guys you know fill the higher roles and, and take on that responsibility and the guys that are ready for it and you know everyone else just kind of building off of that Yeah well first game's nearly on us actually I mean it's only eight, what, eight nine, nine days before we play Must um, be something like Glasgow that, yeah. Yeah. Well, looking forward to that Buzzing, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I've I've never really played against any sort of kind of elite league competition, so um, it'll be a good test for myself to kind of gauge where I'm at. Um, obviously, you see a lot of guys kind of around about my age getting the, the two ways now, so good to see in comparison to yeah. you know what what they're doing and and seeing where they're at and in comparison to myself and see what the level really is like. So. No, I'm, I'm I'm feeling good about it. Obviously, it would be good to, to keep it tight. And I know we're definitely going to be the underdogs, but if, if we can keep that as, as tight as possible for, you know, the uh, the majority of the game and, you know, miracles can happen. So Yeah, well... I like never, being the underdog. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's good. You never you never know. The last time the climb were here, the, the Sharks did lead at the end yeah. of the first. That yeah. was commentating. Yeah. It was... Uh, it was a fantastic gap of goals. So we're hoping somebody can do something very similar. Uh, this time. We did get beat in the end, but yeah. I'm not gonna, I'm not, we're not going to dwell on that, carry on at all. But the, the pre-season games are quite interesting games. They're all three. Bit different, th- yeah. Aye, they're all very different, aren't they? Yeah. Looking Which, forward to actually getting back up to Edinburgh again. I've, um, we played like a midweek game a couple of years ago um, when, when we didn't have the ice. Yeah. Um, obviously, I played in Edinburgh like half of my juniors and then I played a couple of couple of years senior there um, loved the big ice it's and looking, a, looking forward to playing on it again it's, icon- it's an iconic rink isn't it, it? Is, yeah. I used to love it man like when I was playing there for juniors and stuff as well I always loved it ha- loved having that much space so yeah no, that should be fun as well and obviously I know a lot of the boys that were playing with the racers back when I was with them um, at the time so no, it'd be good to, to see some familiar faces up there as well and get a good game in it's uh, it's certainly it's certainly got a history as uh, Murrayfield 
And uh, I'll share something with you. It's where I, where I took my wife on her first date. Me and her went ice skating at Murrayfield back in the day. Yeah. So uh, the seats still haven't changed. <laughs> I can the imagine, The yeah. stovies and the yeah. cafe still haven't Aye. changed. But um, it, it is massive. I was kind of saying that to Mason on last week's podcast. He's never played there before. We went to like, see it though. It's huge. Well, he said he'd never. No, no, no. Never it, well, been. it might have been after that, but um, I, I, I took him up to, to Edinburgh. He'd never been to Edinburgh before. He'd never been Edinburgh. He'd never before. been to Edinburgh, so I was like, I'll, I'll take you up. So we went. So up. Did you go to the rink? Yeah, and uh, I'd actually I'd parked at the rink because uh, also I like I'm just used to parking at the rink there and then parked getting the, the rink and yeah, yeah. And, and getting onto the, the tram and, and heading into City Centre. We're actually on the way back to the car and. We seen spuds. He was, <laughs> he, was, he, was, he was there for a coaching course. So he was like, Mason was desperate to see in the rink because he only heard his dad talk about it. So, um, what do yeah, you th- th- think? That he's buzzing to play. He's just seen the size of it. He's like, oh, get loads of space in there. So there is loads of space. Yeah, <laughs> but so, uh, it's pretty big for a no, three season it's, it's game. Massive, yeah. So, um, nah. So we went and got a look around, and nah, I think it's got him pretty excited for it as well. Yeah, I'm sure there'll be over a thousand people watching oh, yeah. uh, that game in, in Edinburgh. And, Probably the same down here as well. Yeah, no, I'd, I'd imagine so. Obviously, towards the end of last season, we started to get some really good crowds yeah. in. And Edinburgh's kind of known for for their good crowds as well. Even back when I was playing with the Racers, they were still getting good numbers to their games. And I even remember playing Solway, and there was always a good travelling crowd there. So I'd imagine very much the same now. And, you know, they've they've yeah. got a really good thing going on up there. So that'll nah, be fun. Certainly have. Um, then, after that, forward a few weeks, Leeds at home. Nice easy one to start with, yeah. Yeah, no, I, I mean, you need to beat everyone to, to win the league, so may as well get the, the hard ones in early. And look if it's, not, it's not a bad time to play. No, Sunday exactly. When they're, they're, you know, um, we don't know how people are reacting to the pre-season and how exactly. they're going to come out of the blocks. No, we need to just um, use, the, use the pre-season wisely, wisely, get everyone gelling, and that way, you know, first game of the season comes and we're ready to kind of kick on and, you know, not have the same kind of issues as last season and, and really make the most of it and get a good run at it and, you know, I think, um, yeah, maybe on paper we don't have the strongest team, but one thing is we've we've got a great group of boys in there and a bunch of boys that will really go to battle for each other and that's that's all you need. You need that mentality. And if we can then build, you know, not only a team spirit, but have that winning mentality, if we can True. get a good run going, then, you know, anything can happen. And I'm always a kind of strong believer. I kind of don't go into any competition without having the mentality you've got to win it. So... We, as, as much as, yeah, we aren't the favourites, you need to go in with that same mentality and if everyone can get on board, then, you know, who knows what will happen. We saw very clearly last season that anybody can beat anybody and I, mm-hmm. I know people get tired of saying that, but that is indeed the case. Yeah. And uh, we beat everybody in that league, apart from who were playing on the, the second <laughs> the second game. Yeah. We're away at Telford, but we yeah. did take points there and there was some... Nah, I'm going to say it, there was some extremely strange um, refereeing decisions in in a couple of those games, including the the overtime penalty that was yeah. that was called in that last game there, because that was there, it was a shocking, shocking yeah. decision. I also had a penalty shot safe to win it as well, so yep. Yep. we had plenty of chances against them, but you know, we're, we're going to get them, season. We'll, we'll get them this year, I'm, I'm pretty sure of it, you know, we're going to, as I said before, it's we've, everyone's had a year's experience, we're all ready to go again, and you know, I mean, just need to make the most of it and then get kicking early. And as boys that are looking to to prove something and take these chances, you know, we've got a lot of boys fighting for spots, so it's it's a it's a good problem to have. Well, you know, as we go through the season, we're going to be catching up with you and all your teammates, and you know, we we totally appreciate the time you guys give to talk to talk to fans through 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 this this podcast. It's really appreciated, and. Uh, you know, it's not every club and every player that, that does these things. So, you know, thank you for coming down to speak to me today. Mm-hmm. You're going to have to blame your pal Mason for this next bit. I'm though. really worried for this because uh, he's so unpredictable, man. Well, Mason, when Martin on the podcast said he wanted more interaction with the fans on the, the podcast, and I agree with Mason. So remember to like, share and subscribe <laughs> and get some comments on this because... He set a challenge about asking a music question okay. to fans, and fans were to email in the answer. That was fine. I had no idea what the answer of the music question was. I am clearly way too old. I had no idea the young. answer as well. I listened Mason's to that Mason's question. Young that. But Martin, on the podcast that we recorded today that you haven't seen, and it's obviously going to be coming out soon, put another level to this. 
Okay. So Martin's give you a scenario and he wants your answers to, the, to this and he wants everybody to comment on this. Imagine you're putting on a music festival. Okay. And you're allowed three headline acts. Oh, God. Hey, okay. One one headline act has got to be a current band. Okay. The next one has got to be a band that has reformed. Now, I got mixed up when I was answering this because he surprised me. Is that but, like a know, band that's like... Had up broken up, had broken up, or, they, or had a change in the lineup. Can they have already came, in, but they have to have came back together, or...? Then it confuse me now, mate. No, um, no, you're saying they've so reformed. If, you've, if they've, they've reformed... They've reformed, well, a band that's reformed. So they're back together. Right, back together. Right, okay. Not went off and done another band. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Didn't, didn't get me confused now. Okay, right. And the last, band, the last bit, the last headliner is Back From The Dead. So some a band, a person that has died that you would love to see in your music festival. So three, three bands, current band, a reformed band, and a Back From The Dead band. No pressure. Off you go. Someone I'd love to see a band. Um, God, this is terrible, man. You put me in the spot. I got put in the spot when Martin was doing it to me. I'm, I'll, I'll, I'll try and kill time while you're having a, <laughs> while you're having a think. Um, so you have a wee think, hey, okay. and I'll send another message to the fans here. It's just a, rem- a, a reminder that you know it's not going to be long before the Sharks play. You've got a great chance to get. So, uh, some tickets for the upcoming games. It's going to be just nine days since we record this to the Glasgow Clan game. They're only, I think they're only standing tickets left, so get yourself down for that. It's going to be a cracker. You're going to see stars like Lewis play <laughs> in that. But um, you've got the openers of the season coming very, very soon. So get your eyes open for that. Get your tickets sorted. Lewis, I've tap danced enough. Right, yeah. Over uh, to you. Wait, can it be like a single person? Can it be like a DJ or something? Right. We're going to have to. Cut. I'm looking at James here because this is like. <laughs> right. What, what, what we are here, we're now putting in different, different um, rooms. Yes, it can be a single right, person. Right, okay. Um, <laughs> so, like, I'm going to like have it a bit kind of varied. Um, just make up the rooms so, as you go along. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll just do that. Right. <laughs> um, that um, me, me and Kel actually went to a festival with a few of my mates uh, in the summer. Just, uh, just play the festival. And uh, <laughs> you and Mabeka was, was really good. Right, so that's um, current. Yeah, that's, that's current. Um, if I was to reform, I know that uh, Catfish and the Bowman, they're just kind of back together. I'd like to see them. Right. Um, and Back From so the Dead. Back From the Dead. Just probably too young. That's uh, that's generally what I was thinking. Um, and see, the thing is... You, you, even used, it, you used to be one of my favourite players, Lewis, you're not in the middle. And even like older people, man, I don't even know if they're like... Still kicking about. <laughs> well, if they're not kicking about, you can bring them back from the dead. Just go for an old person that's nearly dead, dead. Uh, I said, go for the Beatles. Beatles. Just, I'll help you out in that one. Yeah. Could go for if you, if you come up with something better. Can you give me some suggestions? Who were you thinking? See, I got it all wrong. Who did you say for like? For, for the ones for 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 current, I said the Snuts. Right, okay. Right, and then for Reformed, I said um, ACDC, but I kind of got mixed up because it was the lead singer changed and all yeah. the rest of it. So, but Martin had kind of said his his suggestion was Oasis. Can I say um, the Foo Fighters with Taylor Hawkins? That would be a good one. I yeah, like I'll that. go for that. that actually, I actually, that's a better, that's a better, better Okay, I'll go, I'll go for that. Right. My other one was Queen. Right, okay. With Freddie back, that would be that would be awesome. Yeah. Right, we've just murdered the end of this. Uh, I think podcast. I got that spot on. Oh, eventually. Yeah. But James is going to have to it's get. It's pretty varied. There's probably going to be many people buying tickets for that, but. <laughs> hey. Maybe. Anyway. Maybe just you and Mason. <laughs> Kel as well. He'd be. Kel up for as that. well. Right. No, nah, actually, <laughs> Kel hates anything that's not like techno. Like it's horrendous. Like anything with words in it, he doesn't listen to. Well, we gathered that from the Christmas quiz. He, you know, it was Mason, you oh. and Kel and your team, and you were rubbish at the music questions. Nah, like me and Mason were actually speaking about this in the car, and it's horrendous. Like he's, it's something like his music taste for one genre is like spot on. If you play any other genre around him, he's raging. Like he's he's fuming. Excellent. Yeah, so you can ask him that question. We're going to noise him up about that <laughs> very, very, very soon. Ask him to name a band. He probably can't name one. <laughs> Lewis, thank you so much for spending the time and thanks for indulging us in the the, the hilarity that is the end of this, <laughs> yeah. this, the, these questions. And thanks to everyone who's watched at home. Before I go, 
a last word to the fans from Lewis Young. No, it's um, it's good to be back in Dumfries and ready to get back going again. So, no, everyone get down to the shark tank and uh, now the boys are going to put on a show. Well, we look forward to that show, Lewis. Um, and if you're looking forward to that, um, come along and join us at the shark tank. But for now, thanks for watching. This is Andy Glenn Centurio.